Hello guys, I hope you're all doing really well. Welcome to another addition to the 5 Minute Friday series. Now, imagine being able to create responsive design with just one line of code. You'll probably think I'm crazy, but with CSS Grid, the gift that keeps on giving, we can do just that. So in this 5 Minute Fridays episode, we're going to be learning about Autofill, Autofit and MinMax in CSS Grid to help us create responsive design. <laughs> So we're inside VS Code guys, and as you can see in the uh, body here, we've got a CSS grid layout. So we've got a div with a class of grid container and six grid items inside. And if we go to the style sheet, you can see we've got a grid template columns of repeat three one FR. So we've got three columns, as you can see here in the browser, and they've got a width of one FR, so they take up the available space. So pretty standard stuff. And as you can see, we've also got two media queries, which have a max width of 800 pixels and a max width of 600 pixels. So what this will do is if once we get under 800 pixels, you'll see we'll get to two columns with the repeat one FR. And then if we get even smaller than that to 600 pixels, you'll see they're completely stacked on top of each other. And we've only got one column with one fraction unit. So again, pretty standard stuff. But the thing that splits the uh, beginner programmer to the more advanced programmer is being able to write less code and achieve the same outcome. So in correlation to the code you see on the screen, these media queries here work perfectly fine, but we can actually achieve all of this in just one line of code. So what I'm going to do first uh, to demonstrate is just comment out the media queries. So we no longer have that responsiveness. So now once we shrink down, um, the boxes just shrink up and it just doesn't look that good. So we need to make this responsive. So to achieve responsive design in just one line of code, we need three features. Now we already have the first feature, which is the repeat function here. So this takes two values. So first you explicitly define how many columns you want, and then you set a width, and usually this will be a fractional unit. Now the issue with this, as we've just seen, this isn't responsive. Now to make this responsive, we need two more features. So the next one is the min max function, and we put that in the second value here. So we're gonna say min max, and the two values we insert here are the linear wording you just see. So first the minimum width and then a maximum width. So I want the minimum width of our boxes or our columns to be 250 pixels. And we want this to be one FR of width. Now the fraction unit we've just used here means that when there isn't enough space to fit a full column, the space will be distributed equally until new column can be added, making sure that we aren't left with any empty space at the end of the row. Now this alone won't be enough because we're still only explicitly defining three columns per row. We need that final third and magical ingredient and that's the auto fit or the auto fill. Now instead of setting columns, we insert either auto fit here or auto fill. Now what these two will do is just tell the browser to start wrapping the elements when there isn't enough space to fit the elements. And because we've set a minimum width of our columns to be 250 pixels, once this is triggered, they will automatically start wrapping. So if I grab the browser here and I start um, shrinking the browser screen size down, once we hit that threshold of 250 pixels, they'll start wrapping on top of each other. And if we get even smaller, once we hit that threshold of 250 pixels, when it can no longer fit that, it will stack on top of each other. And as you can see, we now have responsive design in just one line of code, which really shows the power of CSS Grid. Now you may be wondering what the difference between these two are, so that being auto fill and auto fit. Now auto fill fills the row with as many columns as it can fit, so it creates implicit columns whenever a new column can fit, because it's trying to fill the row with as many columns as it can. Even if that means newly added columns are empty, they will still occupy that designated space in the row. Now auto fit pretty much works exactly the same, but the key difference is that any new columns that get added collapse in on each other. So I'm gonna put this in a visual perspective and we're gonna go back inside VS Code. So what I've done to help us demonstrate this, I've just commented out two of the boxes and I'm just going to start with auto fill up here. Now, again, the difference between the two keywords is made apparent when the viewport gets wide enough to fit um, extra columns into that row. So if I grab the uh, browser here and I start getting wider, you can see now it'll create another row and box four can fit inside um, the new column because we've hit that threshold of 250 pixels. But watch what happens when I keep expanding you can now start seeing that it'll create another column even if that's empty and it will just keep going so it'll create even more column once we hit that threshold of 250 pixels and it will just keep doing this because the behavior is essentially saying fill that row up with as many columns as you can i don't care if they're empty it will still show up now if i bring this back down and i change this to auto fit Again, this is pretty much the exact same behavior. It will fill the row with more columns as the viewport increases. But again, the only difference is that the newly added columns will collapse in on each other. So firstly, it will expand, hit that threshold of 250 pixels, 
fill in box four for that column. But if we keep going, you can see now it's not actually creating any new columns um, like um, autofill does. The content now just expands. But essentially behind the scenes, the new columns are being created, but they're just collapsing in on each other and essentially have no width. That's why we're not seeing any new columns appear. And that's the key difference between auto fit and auto fill. But that'll be it for this video, guys. If you did like the content, please hit the like button and please consider subscribing. If you have any questions, please leave them down below. And I'll see you guys next week in the next 5 Minute Fridays episode.